Hello, my name is Jessica Morales, and today I'll be talking about reliability analysis with ETAP. We will discuss terminologies, objectives, calculations, and ETAP capabilities with distribution system reliability analysis. We will first give definitions for some frequently used terms related to reliability analysis. Reliability. It is a probability of a system performing its function adequately for the period of time and operation conditions intended. Adequacy is for a system to have sufficient facilities within the system to satisfy customer demand. Security It is the ability of a system to respond to disturbances arising within that system, which is one of the intended operational conditions. Reliability assessment in general is classified as for generation station and generation capacity, for composite generation and transmission system, for distribution systems, for substation and switching stations, for protection system. ETEP reliability analysis model is mainly for distribution systems. Now let's look at the main objectives of ETEP reliability analysis model. One is to minimize total cost meaning reliability cost and consumer interruption cost. Two, it can be used for system planning and operation. Three, it concerns with availability and quality of power supply at each customer's service entrance. ETEP capabilities. ETEP allows the reliability analysis of radio as well as loop systems considers single and double contingencies, assesses reliability le level for entire system and at each load point based on component failure model and system configuration. ETEP sensitivity analysis identifies the optimal place to make the greatest improvement at a minimum cost. We would like to review some basic concepts of reliability calculations. Components are represented by a two-state up-down model, seen here, which is used for operation repair cycle of components such as lines, cables, transformers, breakers, fuses, switches, loads, and bus bars. Active failure rate, number of failures per year, represented by lambda A, represents the failure that causes the operation of the primary protection zone around the failed component and can therefore cause the removal of the other healthy components. An example will be a sure circuit fault. Passive failure rate, number of failures per year represented by lambda p, does not cause the operation of protection devices and therefore does not have an impact on the remaining healthy components. For example, an open circuit fault. Mean time to repair in hours, or MTTR, which is seen here, is the time it takes to repair a component outage and or restore the system to its normal operating state. Mean repair rate, number of repairs per year represented by mu, is equal to 8760 divided by the mean time to repair. Two components in series. For two components in series, the total failure rate, represented by lambda of the system, is the sum of each component failure rate, and the total failure duration, R of the system, is calculated with the equation shown. Two components in parallel. For two components in parallel, the total failure rate, lambda of the system, and total failure duration, R of the system, are calculated by the equations shown. For system modeling, ETAP considers the following. For fault current interruption, only overcurrent protection devices, such as circuit breakers and fuses, can interrupt fault current, and interruption is assumed to be instantaneous. For fault isolation, all switching devices can isolate a fault, but circuit breakers and fuses isolate a fault instantaneously. 
For normally open tie protective devices, the two turnable buses are energized. Several PDs can be connected in series with more than one open. An open tie protected device can be closed in switching time to provide backup power. Now let's summarize the most common distribution system reliability indices. The average failure rate, lambda i, and annual outage duration, ui, at load point i, are calculated by these equations, where lambda ej is the average failure rate of element j, or element combination j, such as double contingency, and e is the total number of the elements whose faults will interrupt load point i, or ij is the failure duration at load point i due to the failure of element j. The average outage duration at load point i in hours is equal to the annual outage duration over the average failure rate. The expected energy not supplied index, EENSI, at load point is equal to the average load of load point i times the annual outage duration. Expected interruption cost index at load point is calculated by this equation, where the function of Rij is a sec sector consumer damage function, also known as SCDF. Here are some of the other distribution system reliability indices for the evaluated system. System average interruption frequency index, System Average Interruption Duration Index, Customer Average Interruption Duration Index, Average Service Availability Index, Average Service Unavailability Index, Average Energy Not Supplied, Interruption Energy Assessment Rate. ETAP's reliability analysis results will be given in display, reports, and plots. It gives both system and load point reliability indices. For sensitivity analysis, it will give load point EENS and ECOST, as well as component ranking. Here we see an example of sensitivity analysis results for ECOST in component ranking. The most contributed component for system total ECOST is T2, and the least contributed component is SYN3. Now let's look at a simple radio system example. Example 1. The failure rate for the utility bus 1 and bus 2 is equal to 0 0.001 and the MTTR is equal to 2 hours. The failure rate for the cable is equal to 0 0.05 failures per year times kilometers and MTTR is 30 hours with length equal to 1 kilometer. You can do a quick hand calculation as shown. As you can see from ETAP calculation, bus 1 and bus 2 have the same reliability indices since there is no protective device to isolate a fault. I will go to ETAP to open this example and show calculations. I opened example 1 which I previously created in ETAP. I go into the utility editor by double clicking on it. If I go to the reliability page, I can see that the failure rate is set to 0 0.001 failures per year and MTTR is set to 2 hours. I select OK and I can see for the bus one, go to reliability and the failure rate was set to 0 0.001 and the MTTR was set to 2 hours. Select OK. I go to bus 2. In the editor, I go to reliability page. And again, the failure rate was set to 0 0.001 and the MTTR to 2 hours. If I go into the cable 1, double click on it. In the editor, go to the reliability page. 
and I see that the failure rate here is 0 0.05. For simplicity, we set the passive failure rate to 0. MTTR was set to 30 hours. Select OK. Now I am ready to run reliability analysis. I go to the top toolbar, select reliability assessment. Here, I select on the right vertical toolbar, Run Reliability Assessment, and now we see our calculations. We see that bus 1 and bus 2 have the same failure rate. By going to the Display Options, which would be the second button on the vertical toolbar, we see that we have the option of selecting average outage duration by hour and annual outage duration hour per year. Let's select average outage duration so we can see it in hours. We want to see our results for buses, generators, load points and we select OK. And now we see that our results have changed. After running a reliability analysis calculation we're able to see a summary of all the input data and results in a report. If we go to the third button on the right vertical toolbar, select it, we see the report manager. We have different types of reports, complete, input, result, and summary. For now, I will select the complete report, select OK, and here we see all our information of our study. It will give me the number of elements, system frequency, unit system used, project file name, and output file name. Then it will give me all the input data for the elements, such as buses, branches, switching devices, load input, source input data, and branch connections. Then we see our sector interruption cost. For each sector name, it gives my interruption duration and cost. Load point output reports, expected interruption cost, expected energy not supplied, and finally our summary of system indexes. If we go to the edit mode, which is this pencil here, and drop a load, which would be any of these elements, motors, loads, I will drop an induction machine. I double click on the editor. If I go to the reliability page on the editor, I will see that the interruption cost here for the load sector. I can select the drop down list, and here I have the different options of load sectors. I can set it to agricultural, commercial, government, etc. Example 2. This example is for a parallel system. We will now compare the results between single contingency and double contingency cases. For simplicity, the failure rates for breakers connecting the transformers to the buses are equal to zero. We notice that for double contingency analysis, the indices at main bus are the same, but are a lot higher for bus 2. This is due to the consideration of both transformer T1 and T2 fail at the same time. I will go to ETAP and open this example and show you the calculations. I open the example 2 in ETAP. Notice I made two presentations. One presentation for single contingency calculations and the other for double contingency calculations just for the mere purpose of comparing them side by side. If I select the single contingency presentation, I go to my RA single study case by selecting this button here. Notice that I have different options in my study case, one of them which is method. I selected single contingency level. I select OK. Again, we will run the calculations by going to the top right 
vertical toolbar. I run. It's asking me to select a library file, which I will select the default library for ETAP. Once I do that, I get my calculations for the single contingency. Now I will go to my presentation for the double contingency calculations. I will go to my study cage, which I named RA double. And notice that in the method, I selected double contingency level. I select OK. Again, I will run the reliability assessment calculations. And notice the difference between a single contingency and double contingency. If I go to my display options button, I can select to view my EENS eCost. I select OK and that will change the display for that presentation which was the double contingency results. I will select the presentation OLV single, do the same, go to display options, EENS eCost and select OK. And we can see the difference between the e-cost, between the two different calculations. Another option would be to see the reliability analysis plots by selecting this button. Here you have a list of device types which will have plots. If I go to my study case and I go to the plot page, I had selected to plot bus 2 and main bus. If I go again to the plots and select buses for device type, I can select bus 2 and select to see plot type EENS and E cost. I select OK and here we see the plots for the single contingency. I can do the same by selecting the presentation for the double contingency results, go to the plot options, select to plot bus 2, select OK, and we see the differences between the e-cost and EENS for each element. I also have the option of seeing how many elements are contributing to the elements to EENS and eCost. If I go to System Index Report or Load Index Report, I can set the number of most contributing elements. Here it's set to 4, which we saw on the graphs. This concludes the presentation for Distribution System Reliability Analysis. For more information, please visit our website at etap.com or any of the following. Thank you for your time.